Welcome to video 9.3 for the UOIT AEDT program's adult learning in a digital context course. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. Before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video, and consider the following questions. In the previous video, we explored two types of rubrics defined by their purpose. The previous video identified holistic and analytic rubrics as two different types of rubrics. However, this will specifically focus on considerations for creating an analytic rubric. You can then take these considerations and apply them to creating a holistic rubric. To recap, a rubric is a tool that is extremely useful for assessing authentic learning tasks. So when creating a rubric, consider how the rubric could provide helpful feedback to students as well as facilitate their learning as they complete the authentic assessment task. How could a rubric facilitate assessment for and as learning in addition to its function of assessment? Before we can create the rubric, we need to consider creating an assessment task. Because we are using a rubric, we then assume that the task will be authentic in nature. To recap, pause the video and take a look at some of the differences between authentic and traditional assessment. In a nutshell, tasks that are authentic in nature help students rehearse for the complex ambiguities within a particular context. There is no one best way to create a rubric. Consider the previous videos and pause to jot down some key elements that one would consider when creating a rubric. We go back to the learning objectives and the relationship between assessment and instructional activities, core principles of assessment. Pull them out and have them handy. Why do we need to consider these principles when creating a rubric? Then determine the learning objectives that the assignment will address. You have course objectives, so start there. How will the assignment help you achieve the course learning objectives? Then you create the task. Better yet, have your students help determine the task. Then brainstorm criteria that will demonstrate the learning. What specifically will you see or hear as evidence of student learning? Again, get the students to help you do this. Why and how does this facilitate their learning? This brainstormed list of criteria is critical. And that is the starting of creating a rubric. But how specifically could we do this? Once you have identified the criteria of what you would see or hear to demonstrate student learning, then you have to determine the continuum of learning to demonstrate the various levels of achievement of a particular criterion. So criteria and levels of performance for each criterion forms your rubric, but it is much easier said than done. So we start with the identified learning objectives of the task, performance, or final product to be assessed. Remember to refer to a variety of cognitive processes if the task reflects a cognitive task. Let's use these learning objectives. Pause and read these objectives that will serve as an example for our rubric. So based on the learning objectives, the students will collect data about classmates. They will organize data in two different formats. Does this task reflect the learning objectives? Pause to review. Then we brainstorm criteria of what we will see or hear in the performance of the task, or maybe the final product, or perhaps a process. Here's the task. Pause and consider what specific elements of collecting data, organizing data, and then creating representations of the data I might consider within this task. Make a list of elements that will reflect it. Here's the task with my brainstormed list of various elements within that task that could be assessed. I would look for or listen for, depending on the task, the criteria on the screen before you. Does this make sense? Then from the brainstormed list, I had to make some choices and narrow it down to a few key criteria. For each criterion you include, chances are you will need to revisit the task specifically for that criterion. So it is suggested that you select the key areas of learning. If the product or process fits more within a holistic rubric, 
you might want to create that type instead. Pause to examine the specific statements I extracted from the brainstormed list of criteria. So to recap, we started with the learning objectives to develop the task. From the task, we brainstormed criteria that would demonstrate learning within the task. Check to make sure the statements are clear. Remember, this could also guide the learners as they complete the task. Also consider how the statements do not stifle the learners as they engage in the authentic task. For example, here are the criteria placed in a matrix or grid. And upon first glance, the criteria this rubric will address still allows for learners to demonstrate their learning in a variety of ways. If the criteria stated, develop a text-based plan to solve the problem, how does that limit the learning? Consider also the various cognitive processes. How do these verbs relate to these processes? Then we need to consider what exactly we are looking for within the criteria. For example, what specifically about developing a plan to solve a problem do you want to consider? Is it the level of appropriateness, the clarity of the plan, the accuracy, the depth? We need to consider qualifiers to describe each criterion to create a continuum of learning of each particular criterion. So when considering what the criteria is explicitly reflecting, understanding of the task and the learning objectives is important. When developing a plan, are you looking at the logic of the plan? Are you looking at the accuracy of the classroom data? Are you looking at the clarity of the communication? What about application of mathematical knowledge? Are you looking for depth or breadth of knowledge? Again, do these qualifiers stifle or limit student thinking? As mentioned previously, creating a rubric is a challenge. Again, consider qualifiers to describe each criterion to create a continuum of learning for each particular criterion. Pause to reflect. Here are some examples of qualifiers. This is not a prescriptive list, but rather it is to stimulate your thinking of additional qualifiers. Let's go back to this example and consider the second criterion and the notion of accuracy as a qualifier to develop the criterion along the continuum. What evidence is needed to demonstrate that a student's classroom data collection is completed with accuracy? Pause to read. How does this continuum reflect differences of learning? Is it really considering the accuracy of how classroom data is collected? Or is it something else? Take a look at the bolded words. Well, this seems to be measuring frequency. Is this really appropriate for this particular individual authentic assessment task? How often did the learners have opportunities to collect the data? Hopefully, prior to this authentic activity, the learners had opportunities to participate in such data collection tasks with opportunities for formative assessment so that when a culminating task is completed, the learner can use the feedback to enhance understanding of or skill. But in this one individual activity, is frequency an, an appropriate way to describe accuracy of classroom data? Take a look at the broad categories to consider if another qualifier might be more appropriate. Again, what is it that the learner will be able to do or know upon successful completion of this task? Remember, this is only a small list. How might you add to this list? With our example of accuracy, we might consider the number of errors in the data. This might be more appropriate for this particular task. Does this reflect the learning objectives and the task? Take a look at the learning objectives and the task and consider if this is appropriate. We will discuss during tutorial. Take a moment to pause and consider these questions we'll discuss in tutorial. This is what the video addressed. Thanks for watching.